Okay, let's talk about the cardiac cycle and answer the questions, what are the phases of the cardiac cycle and what ways do EKG, ECGs correlate with the cardiac cycle? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. Uh, this image is the image we're going to use as we cover the different phases of the cardiac cycle. Uh, but before we begin, a few things. So the cardiac cycle depicts one heartbeat. This heartbeat is repeated continuously, hence the term a cardiac cycle. And the cardiac cycle contains or shows ventricular diastole and ventricular systole, as well as atrial diastole and systole, and the cardiac cycle correlates to ECG tracings. So let's go through that again with this image. This dark portion of the larger green circle is representative of ventricular diastole. It's twice as long as this more limer green, I made up that word I think just now, that more lime green portion, which is half the length of time of ventricular diastole is ventricular systole. Now in the smaller subset, that circle in orange, part of that is atrial systole, and then this other larger part in orange is atrial diastole. So there's the ventricular and atrial contraction relaxation cycle. So we can start anywhere, but we're just gonna start down here at isovolumetric relaxation. This is ventricular diastole when it begins. Now, it's called isovolumetric relaxation because as the ventricles relax, the volume of blood does not change. So all the valves are closed because the pressure in the ventricles is still greater than the atria and as a result, blood is not coming down from the atria, but the pressure is not great enough to push the blood out of the aorta, into the aorta or the pulmonary trunk. So we call this isovolumetric relaxation. Iso for the same volume. The volume of blood has not changed right at the beginning of ventricular diastole. But then ventricular filling occurs where the vent in this part of ventricular diastole, we now have the pressure in the atria greater than the ventricular pressure. So blood is going to go from the atria down into the ventricles. This is the largest portion of the ventricular filling. And then at the very end of ventricular diastole, we have atrial contraction or basically atrial systole. And at the very end, we get the atrial contraction or the atrial kick, and it forces that last bolus of blood into the ventricles. So in these three different phases of ventricular diastole, notice that middle one, ventricular filling, that's passive. That blood is moving from the right and left atria to the ventricles simply because the pressure is greater in the atria than the ventricles. And at the very end of ventricular diastole, we get that kick. We now enter ventricular systole, and the beginning is called isovolumetric contraction. This is when the ventricular diastole begins. The ventricles start to contract, and as they contract, they force the um, tricuspid and mitral valves to close. And so the ventricles contract, but the volume of blood does not change, and all the valves are closed because the pressure in the ventricles is greater than the atria, hence why the AV valves close, but the pressure is not yet greater uh, than the aortic or pulmonary trunk pressure. So the volume of blood stays the same. But then the ventricular ejection, this part of ventricular systole occurs when the ventricle contraction continues and the pressure in the ventricles now exceeds or is greater than the aortic and pulmonary trunk pressure and forces blood out. Then we come right back and you notice the cycle where we're back to isovolumetric relaxation where those ventricles now begin to relax. So we now have gone through this cycle. That's one cycle that continually is repeated for every heartbeat. So how is this correlated to ECG? So if we look up here at atrial contraction or the atrial systole begins, this is known as, this is, what we have now what uh, correlates between these two is that when we look at an EKG, this is showing the atrial depolarization wave that precedes the atrial contraction. Or in other words, this P wave 
is representing the electrical event where the depolarization wave spreads throughout both atria, right and left atria. But that depolarizing event is what causes the calcium-induced calcium release that then results in the myosin and actin contracting that gives us now a motor response or the contraction of the muscle. So the P wave is correlated with the atrial contraction. Now, if we look over here to systole, we see the QRS complex where the ventricular depolarization precedes ventricular contraction. Again, here's an electrical event. The depolarization wave is spreading through the ventricular myocardium, which then causes the calcium to be released and then cause the myosin actin to contract. So the uh, QRS complex is the electrical event that precedes this contraction or motor event, contraction of the heart muscle. And then finally, when we look over here in this beginning page of diastole, part of diastole, there's the T wave. And the T wave is ventricular repolarization, which is following the ventricular contraction. This is now where all the ventricular myocardium is repolarizing back to a resting stage. So this electrical event precedes these two mechanical events. And that, my friends, is the cardiac cycle in a nutshell.